Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and today I want to talk about local storage within JavaScript. So, local storage is essentially the storage of data locally without using any PHP or anything server-side. It's done purely within JavaScript and inside the actual web browser. And it's actually stored specifically to the domain and the protocol being used. So it's quite straightforward and it's um, the data is stored using key value pairs. It's also very easy to actually use. So today, we're gonna make this right here. It's a simple application where you have a key and value um, data entry. When you insert some data, for example, let's just say occupation, and we'll say web developer, so a key and value pair here. We press insert, and it appears right there. If you were to change something, for example, we'll say age and then we'll say instead of 60, we'll say 35. Insert, that gets replaced right there. Alright? But first, we'll look at how web storage, sorry, local storage actually works um, by itself. So, over here in this fresh document, let's open up the editor right here. Okay. So, local storage is accessed using the local storage read-only property part of the window object. So, you can actually just say window.localStorage to get access to that property. But since it's actually part of the window object, you can simply just say local storage, and that'll give you the same thing. Now this property here actually gives you something called a storage object. And we'll actually just log out here. We'll just, we'll just log out local storage, all right? So we'll save this one, go in the browser, refresh, all right? And we see that right there. This is the same data as this page. That's because it's on the same domain, youtube.local, all right? So it's shared across different directories even, all right? Okay, so if we just um, expand the prototype for this storage object, we can see we've got a few methods here. We have clear, get item, key, remove item, and also set item. So we have data here. What we'll do is we'll actually clear it. So we'll say local storage and then dot clear. All right. We press enter here. We now refresh the page and now local storage is empty. Okay. So let's see these methods. All right. What we'll do is we'll actually just get rid of this right here. All right, and we'll actually add a key value pair to the local storage uh, object. So we'll say local storage dot set item. Okay, this method takes in two parameters or two arguments. The first one being the key, and the second being the value. For example, let's just say something like name, the key, the value, Dominic. All right, we'll save this one. Go in the browser, refresh, all right. We'll just log out local storage down here, press enter, and we get that right there. Simple as that. Now, if I get rid of this, all right, so now that's not there anymore. If I save this and then refresh the browser, we'll see we actually still get the key value pair in there. So the page was refreshed and the data remained persistent. This works over years. Like you can do this code and then three years down the line, come back and the code, sorry, the data will still be there. The data does not expire. Local storage stays there for as long as your computer or your web browser allows it to be. All right, so keep that in mind. Now, we can use the remove item method to remove a key and value from the local storage. So, inside here, We'll just type in local storage dot remove item, all right, and then pass in the key. So we'll say remove item, and we'll pass in name. We might as well just log out the local storage, make it simpler, all right. If we save this one, refresh the browser. Now we get nothing in the local storage, all right. So that is that is uh, the, sorry that is um set item and remove item covered. Now, get item, 
will give you the value when you pass in a key. All right, so let's go back inside here and we can add some more data. So we'll say local storage dot set item. We'll set the item of age and give it a value of 30. Now keep in mind right here, local storage stores stuff as string and then string. So the key will be a string and the value will also be a string. That's why I've got uh, double quotes around that number there. We'll also just say local storage and we'll add one more set item. Let's just pass in uh, once again name and make that dominant. All right. Okay. So now we're going to log out local storage dot get item and pass in the age key. Okay. We'll save this one, refresh the browser, and we get 30. That is the value for the key of age. Now keep in mind, right, if I was to go inside here and instead of passing in a string, pass in an integer or a number, for example 50, right, now if we save this and just log out local storage on its own, we actually see that that value gets converted to a string automatically. So JavaScript just says, all right, number, now make, make that a string. So it does it automatically for you. That's that. We also have the key method. And the key method will give you the key when you pass in an index. So um, for example, using using these two once again, if we log out local storage dot key and then pass in one, We'll see what we get. We'll save this one, refresh the browser, and we get name. So uh, behind the scenes here, uh, local storage says age is zero and name is one. So you can actually access the keys by an index, which can be very useful, especially for looping through all your local storage. All right, that's the basics. Now let's make this guy right here. All right, so first we can begin by making those uh, those two input boxes. So up inside here, what we'll do is we'll get rid of all this stuff actually. To start it off, all right, now down here, we'll start with a simple field set element here. So I'll say field set, the legend will be insert, um, insert data. All right, now here we'll pass in or we'll just uh, make those those two input boxes. So we'll say input, get rid of that stuff right there that is not required and give it an ID of something like input key. All right, also a, a nice little placeholder, enter key, dot, dot, dot. All right, we'll do the same thing for the value. So we'll say INP or input value, give it a placeholder of enter value. All right. We'll also make some basic styles, make it look a bit nice. So we'll say input, give it some padding of something like seven pixels and also a height of something like 40 pixels. All right, so we'll save this one, refresh the browser. And what do we get? We get that right there. Perfect. Now for the button, we'll just make a simple button, give it a type of button, a name. Let's change that to ID and give it an ID of BTN insert. Text will say insert data or something like that. Save this one, refresh the browser, and what do we get? We get that right there. Okay, let's make that style apply to the button as well. All right, okay, that's that one. Now for the uh, part where we actually have the data output, this guy right here, we can make that right now. So we'll make another field set, give it a legend, something like, like um, local storage output maybe or just local storage all right inside here make a simple div and give it an id of ls output so here we'll have all the key value pairs outputted inside here okay we'll also give the field set a margin bottom of something like 20 pixels so we'll save this one refresh the browser and what do we get we get that Okay, so now we're ready to actually do some JavaScript coding. So, inside the script section, we can first get references to these four very important elements. 
The first one being the key input. So we'll say make a new constant called INP key equal to the good old document dot get element by ID. If that works, get element by ID and pass in the INP key ID. We'll do the same thing for the input value. Input box, input value, and then INP value. All right. Similar thing for the button. So const btn insert equals document dot get element by ID, and then pass in btn insert. And the same thing for the local storage output. Actually, an ID. So div ID local storage output. All right. So local storage output equals ID ls output. Okay. So now, when this button uh, gets pressed, we want to actually add the key value pair to the local storage. So we can do this by adding an adding an on click listener or handler to this button. So we'll say btn insert dot on click equals this function right here. This function will be called whenever you click on that button. So first we can actually get the key and value from these two input boxes. So we'll make two new constants, one called key equal to INP key dot value and an extremely similar thing for the value. So const value equals input value dot value. So now we'll log out key and we'll log out value when the button gets pressed on. Refresh here, name and then Dominic, press enter or insert key, name and Dominic, perfect. So now we're gonna put this inside the local storage. But first, we'll actually check if we've given some text. Because we could actually just go blank. We could just say, yep, insert, blank insert and then do that, but that's not what we want. So We'll first check if we actually have some some text there. So we'll say if key and value, if those resolve to uh, true both of them, then we're good to go. So we'll say local storage dot set item and pass in key and then value. Now we can simply just refresh the page once that's done. So we'll just say location dot reload. Simple as that. Save this one and refresh the browser. We'll enter a key, for example, name, and make that name something like Jeff. All right. We insert this, the page refreshes. If we see local storage, we get storage. We have that old age from, from earlier, um, you know, earlier, and also the name of Jeff, so that worked. All right. We'll just clear this, so that so local storage is clear, make it all nice and neat. All right that. This time we obviously get nothing in local storage. So now we can uh, begin to populate this little section right here. So we can do this by simply looping through all the key value pairs and just putting it out there. So we can start with a simple for loop. We'll say for let i equals zero and then we'll say i less than local storage dot length and that'll give you the length of all the key value pairs. So how many you've actually got inside there? I plus plus. Okay. So I'm using I here, an index. I'm going to use the the key method on local storage. So it works perfectly. So to actually get the key of one of these local storage um, entries, we can first just make a new constant called key equal to local storage. And then using that same key method from earlier on, we'll pass in I. All right. We have the key. We can then use the key to get the value. So we can make a new constant called value equal to local storage dot get item and pass in key. So now we can simply just make use of this Alice output um, element here, and we'll say Alice output dot inner HTML plus equals. So append to that. We're going to append using a uh, template literal here. We can append to that. And we can put in one of these guys. So we'll say key and then value inside here and then put a nice little line break. All right. We'll also get rid of this to um, make it cleaner 
and now it is all done. So if we save this one, refresh the browser, this time if we insert a key, for example name and the value of Dominic, we insert that one right there and boom we get it inside there. Alright, and that is how you can use local storage within JavaScript. Thank you for watching and I'll see you later.